Magandang araw, Pilipinas. Oras na para sa nababan ng balita tungkol sa gamat teknolohiya sa bansa. Ako po si Oren Miranda, ang inyong kapatid sa Ibabawid. Kasama po ang nag-iisang kalihim ng Department of Science and Technology, Secretary Fortunato Boy de la Peña. Magandang araw po si Boy. Sa makaagham na araw, Onin, at sa ating mga taga-subaybay. At napin na po natin ang updates tungkol sa Science and Technology Program sa bansa sa sektor ng kalusugan, kabuhayan, kayusan at kinabukasan. Narito po si Secretary Boy. Uunahin ko ngayon ang kalusugan at ang isusunod ko ay ang uh, kaayusan. Okay? So sa kalusugan, uh, allow me to report the following. Uh, the application for uh, COVID-19 vaccine phase 3 clinical trials in the Philippines uh, uh, that has been approved to date are uh, three for uh, three vaccine developers uh, to conduct their phase 3 clinical trial in the Philippines. Uh, these are uh, Janssen Pharmaceuticals, Glover Biopharmaceuticals, and Sinovac. A uh, confidentiality disclosure agreement or CDA uh, with the Barat Biotech for the clinical trial in the Philippines was uh, recently signed. Okay, but uh, it, of course it will still go through an evaluation process. Submission of the requirements uh, uh, is being awaited. Now, uh, the other one is the updates on the WHO solidarity uh, vaccine trials. And uh, uh, the, the Philippine uh, team for the WHO solidarity vaccine trial has already started uh, the lecture trainings about the protection uh, safety and well-being of the participants, as well as uh, how adverse events should be recorded and reported during the vaccine clinical trials. Uh, the uh, said the lecture training is part of the preparatory activities while awaiting the final standard operating procedures and specific protocols from WHO. The WHO Philippines is yet to respond to this said uh, letter. Uh, also, the memorandum of agreement between uh, the DILG and DOST that outlines the partnership between the two agencies for the conduct of the WHO solidarity vaccine trials has already been signed. And uh, the DOST, as chair of the task group on vaccine evaluation and selection, already sent a follow-up letter to the WHO regarding the final start date of the solidarity vaccine trials in the Philippines. Um, also, there were letters signed by uh, Secretary Galvez, and uh, this is for the guidelines of the uh, local government units' assistance on the implementation of the WHO uh, solidarity vaccine trials. These were sent already last January 13, 2021, to the mayors where the WHO trials will be conducted. And uh, there are uh, uh, a series of uh, so-called town hall meetings uh, for the preparations uh, uh, in this solidarity vaccine uh, trials. Okay. Now let us move on to uh, the third uh, item, which is uh, uh, actually a uh, human resource development uh, initiative uh, on the part of our DOST, Philippine Council for Health Research and uh, Development. And I am uh, referring to our capacity building program uh, for uh, uh, liver research. Okay, now uh, uh, we have, of course, a uh, 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 ongoing scholars in uh, our MD PhD program, and uh, uh, we have uh, actually uh, the names of these ongoing scholars uh, who were given uh, research. Uh, uh, on uh, liver cancer. Okay, so this is uh, uh, Miss Lorraine Cabral and uh, Noel Salbosa. Okay, and uh, actually uh, they they are doing the so-called uh, sandwich program, uh, uh, and uh, this is uh, being done in uh, uh, Triste, uh, Italy, uh, in cooperation with the uh, Foundation for uh, 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 Liver uh, Research. Uh, there are also two ongoing scholars who will be going to Italy for also for, this, for their sandwich programs. So Ina Aquino and uh, Eric Olmos, okay? uh, one will go to the Fundacion Italiana Pegato. This is the foundation for uh, 
uh, Italian Foundation for Liver, and uh, one uh, uh, will go to the University of uh, Pisa. So this is part of our program. Uh, we are uh, collaborating with the uh, UP uh, National Institutes of Health in UP Manila to set up a, uh, a liver center uh, which can be part of the international liver research uh, network. So we are building up our capability for liver uh, research. Now, uh, the uh, next item is uh, something that is also very interesting. Our uh, DOST Philippine Council for Industry, Energy and Emerging Technologies, R&D, or DOST Pichard, reports the status of the breathing simulator and ventilator projects uh, of the DOST and Pichard. They reported that Sigla vent ventilator developed by researchers from the Technological Institute of the Philippines or TIP has passed its pre-certification test comprising of tests for leakage current, ground resistance, tidal volume, respir respiration rate, oxygen delivery, uh, uh, and the uh, uh, this is what uh, uh, is called in, uh, in their language, I to E ratio, and uh, of course, uh, uh, and uh, what they call the PEEP, uh, uh, CMH2O level. The passing test result is a prerequisite for the final test, which is the medical inspection by a third party accredited testing facility to be conducted by the first week of February. Uh, the DOST shared supported project aims to design an automated emergency ventilator, build a working prototype, conduct appropriate testing methods, and provide a fabrication ready, fabrication ready design and software inclusive of the product manuals. So meanwhile, the industry group uh, called the Electronic Industries Association of the Philippines Incorporated, uh, EAP, and the DOST Advanced Science and Technology Institute, or the DOST ASTI, have now installed a breathing simulator and ventilator tester service at our electronic products development center that can test ventilators basic uh, features. Two prototypes have already been developed and testing of their functionalities is ongoing. Uh, one of the uh, uh, pediatric prototypes was converted into a test platform uh, for the breathing uh, simulator, uh, PED prototypes, I mean. The research team also performed a compliance comparison testing between uh, balloon and breathing simulators. While the testing of the prototypes are ongoing, two sets of ventilator validation systems were delivered on the latter part of 2020. These uh, two ventilator validation systems can serve as a gold standard that will enable the Philippines to calibrate and validate not only ventilator prototypes, but also commercially available ventilators as part of the testing services of the Electronic Product Development uh, Center. So it is a tool validation for integrated hardware and software systems that can simultaneously test ventilators. So after all this functional testing, it will proceed to clinical trials. And uh, only once it passes the clinical trials can the ventilators be uh, manufactured in big quantities and used already in hospitals. The fifth item I would like to report on Kalusugan is the uh, uh, DOST Food and Nutrition Research Institute's Enhanced National Nutrition Survey or the ENNS survey results and uh, food technologies essential in Philippine roadmap to achieve zero hunger. The results of the DOST FNRI, ENNS, or the survey, and the technologies that they developed are among those to be adopted in the implementation of the roadmap to achieve zero hunger developed by the Interagency Task Force on Zero Hunger. Okay. Now, uh, uh, we go to Kaayusan. Uh, the project leader of the DOST Picard CLSU research on African swine virus ASF 
uh, mm -hmm. provides updates. Okay. So uh, Picard, of course, is the Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic, and Natural Resources (R&D). CLSU is the Santa Luzon State University in Munoz, Nueva Ecija, and of course, ASF refers to the African Swine Fever uh, uh, Virus. Okay. The doc, the head or the project leader of this research project, Dr. Clarissa Domingo who is a professor at Central Luzon State University, reported the following updates on the DOST Picard CLSU research project on the ASF virus. The first one, initial results of the DNA sequencing of ASF virus collected from local samples revealed two variants of the virus. Uh, this was taken from initial 19 samples that were tested. This information is important in vaccine development and in the crafting of a vaccination plan for the local swine population. Another aspect is that uh, currently the project is fine-tuning what they call loop-mediated isothermal amplification protocol or LAMP, LAMP protocol for diagnosis using blood and meat samples. This protocol has shorter reaction time of about 10 minutes compared to the surface swab protocol, which has been developed earlier that uh, show results in about 30 minutes. So uh, the, the new protocol can uh, uh, do it faster. The surface swab method detects ASF virus from feeds, from water, from delivery trucks, from floors, walls, and other surfaces, okay? And uh, the result of the lamp diagnosis, which has been developed, has been confirmed with PCR testing. So what will be done now is the collection of more samples from other swine producing regions in, uh, uh, to ascertain sensitivity of the test and to gather information on the possible variants of the virus that are present in our local pig population. The last one under Kaayusan is a report of our DOST, Industrial Technology Development Institutes, uh, which reported that they held a virtual training on waste analysis and characterization, or what they call the WACS, uh, WAC studies, WAC study to, to double the ORO local government units. The uh, DOST ITDI conducted this on January 20 to 21, 2021. And uh, the virtual training on the waste analysis and characterization study was uh, done for 25 representatives of 11 local government units in Davao de, de Oro, as well as representatives from the Davao de Oro Provincial Environment and Natural Resources Office, or PENRO. This training is, important, is an important component in the preparation of the 10-year Solid Waste Management Plan of the LGUs in Davao de Oro. And uh, the uh, WACS uh, training determines the amount and the component of solid waste generated in a certain area. Uh, Dr. Mayra Tansenko of, uh, uh, actually has served as the resource person for this uh, training. Uh, so ito ang kabuuan ng aking report sa kalusugan at kaayusan. Onin. Maraming salamat po, Secretary Boy. Unang bahagi pa lang yan, mga kinigan, ng mga balitang agam at teknolohiya. Maraming pa kayong dapat malaman, kaya huwag kayong alis. Magbabalik pa ang DOST Report.
Nagpapatuloy po ang DOST report at narito pong muli, Secretary Boy. Uh, uh, yung ating uh, proyekto sa kabuhayan, unang-una dito na i-report ko ay uh, itong uh, mula sa, per, sa batch 1 graduates ng ating uh, I-Forward PH program. Ito yung uh, innovations for Filipinos working distantly from the Philippines. Ito yung first batch uh, ng ating uh, uh, OFW. Uh, na gusto magtayo ng uh, technology-based uh, micro-enterprises. Nagsimula tayo noon sa 119 applicants and then we uh, uh, trained uh, for phase 1, 90, uh, 98 of them, uh, 59 graduated from phase 1, which is really more on training, on uh, entrepreneurial management, on, and on technologies that they have selected. Yes. And uh, uh, out of the 59 that uh, finished uh, the phase 1 of the study, uh, we now have uh, 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 the first 20 uh, who were endorsed to the regional offices to facilitate their application for innovation funding. So dito ay meron ng uh, financial uh, support mm -hmm. under the Phase 2 program. So kitang-kita naman natin na uh, medyo mahirap ding uh, magdaan dito sa proseso neto out of the 98 that we initially uh, uh, accepted in uh, batch one, 59 uh, graduated, and now uh, the first 20 of this out of this 59 are ready for their uh, startup of their uh, micro enterprise. Uh, so, uh, 20 uh, are now uh, in the process, and uh, they have been endorsed already to our DOST regional uh, offices for assistance. Okay. Next, uh, I would like to report on. Uh, a particular uh, uh, assistance that was provided by uh, DOST Region 3 in capacitating persons with disability in Florida Blanca, Pampanga. So uh, this is really the provision of livelihood opportunities through our uh, CES program. CES is the uh, community empowerment through science and uh, technology. And the group that uh, was assisted by DOST Region 3 is, are the members of the Florida Blanca Association of Persons with Disability, or FAPWDs, as, uh, as the latter continuously seeks for sustainable sources of income for their families. This initiative helped improve the skills and abilities of our FAPWD members in handicraft making, specifically on bamboo-based uh, materials. The OST3 also also provided the group with materials to start their production after the training. So eight of them are now ready to start uh, their bamboo-based uh, handicrafts. Okay, and uh, in the meantime, our uh, local government uh, unit in Florida Blanca uh, uh, municipality also assisted uh, by uh, providing the manufacturing uh, facility, and they have also committed to assist in promoting the products of the association. Uh, over in Batangas, uh, on the other hand, I am referring to a barangay in San Nicolas, Batangas, Barangay Bangkoro, <coughs> and uh, what our DOST Provincial Science and Technology uh, Center did recently was a scoping activity that was spearheaded by the Institute of Agri-Fisheries and Development, uh, or uh, ISAD, and uh, with the DOST uh, Provincial Science and Technology Center, Batangas, as well as the Batangas State University main extension services. It was uh, uh, conducted in uh, Barangay Bangkoro, San Nicolas, Batangas. And uh, the uh, project is actually entitled Understanding Food Security Response Strategies of Disaster Victims, the case of Taal Volcano Eruption. So, a dialogue with the Pamahalaang Barangay members uh, headed by Captain Lubino Cabato was held to uh, lay the grounds of the research project, particularly the conduct of uh, focus group discussions among various uh, sectors. The respondents identified uh, uh, to participate were from six sectors, namely farmers, fisher folk, tricycle drivers, senior citizens, barangay officials, and government employees. And lastly, a tour in some sitios of the barangay was also conducted as a, a component of the uh, scoping. So the project is funded by DOST Picard, 
and implemented by the DOST Calabarzon in partnership with the ISAAD and Batangas State University. In uh, the Visayas, on the other hand, uh, our DOST Region 6 in Iloilo uh, provided uh, science and technology solutions to improve community life in uh, Barangay Inulingan in Moises, uh, Padilla. Okay, this is in Negros Occidental. So regions, DOST Region 6 uh, is implementing a community empowerment to science technology program and their beneficiaries are the members of the Association Sang Manguma sa Barangay Inulingan, uh, in Barangay Inulingan, Moises, uh, Negros, Moises Padilla Negros Occidental. Uh, they uh, launched the project last January 2021 uh, coinciding with the turnover of uh, needed equi equipment for the community. So our uh, provincial director there, Engineer Alan Aldaraog, spearheaded the event, inspected the equipment deployed for the production facility. And this includes a freezer, vegetable cutter, meat grinder, fryer, pulverizer, meat slicer, sausage filler, stainless table, and bun sealer for packaging, among others. It was also raised by uh, the presence of Mayor Elias Ristina Yulo, representing Congresswoman uh, Lourdes Arroyo, and uh, also present during the launching are uh, Inulingan Elementary School's uh, principal and faculty, as well as the members of the association and other uh, concerned uh, citizens. So Barangay Inulingan, by the way, has uh, around 980 hectares of crop, plant, of crop plantation, uh, which include banana, sweet potato, and vegetables. They also have livestock products uh, that are abundant in the locality. And presently, the association that we are assisting is producing around three tons of vegetable uh, products per year. However, the growers in the community only use the traditional way of processing and packing because of the lack of equipment. So recognizing the potential of the community's rich produce, the local government unit tapped the DOST community empowerment through science and technology program to improve the livelihood opportunities of the beneficiaries. Uh, over in uh, Sikihor, on the other hand, in Villanueva, Sikihor, uh, DOST also launched a community empowerment through science and technology project, and their beneficiaries are from the Bataog the Small Coconut Farmers Association in Villanueva, uh, Sikihor. And uh, the uh, uh, project involves this uh, peanut vermicompost production project uh, for members of the Bitaog uh, Small Coconut Farmers Association. Uh, the CEST uh, project there uh, is implemented in cooperation with City Hall State College and the Office of the Provincial Agriculturist, as well as the Barangay LGU of Bitaog in the municipality of uh, Villanueva. Okay, so uh, next we have, uh, this is actually a business incubation program agreement and licensing for the water repellent uh, uh, textile technology. Creative Definitions actually is a social enterprise working with weaving communities, primarily in Negros Occidental, for the promotion of hand-woven products, hand-loom woven products like table runners, shoals, and fabrics. So I was uh, talking about the production of uh, water repellent uh, uh, textile. So wet, water repellency functionality will be added to the uh, lifestyle products of uh, footwear and face masks, which will provide a differentiating value to the product and increase the business opportunities uh, in these uh, cha challenging times uh, for the uh, uh, makers of creative definitions. So for example, they have a Lakat uh, sustainable sneaker that they uh, uh, developed and designed using cotton and pineapple handwoven fabric of yarns that are produced at the uh, PTRI's uh, Innovation Center for Yarns and Textiles, on which water repellency finishing will be applied. Okay, uh, So through the agreement, the uh, creative definitions will be able to access DOST PTRI's finishing laboratory, as well as their experts and technical assistance. And they will also use the space in the Institute's uh, premises as a business incubation um, uh, company. Now, uh, we will now uh, go to the last uh, part, which is Kinabukasan. 
uh, this will be uh, relatively short. Uh, uh, we would like to announce that the Philippine Science High School released the uh, uh, names of qualifiers for the uh, uh, National Competitive Exam or NCE Race uh, Stage uh, 2. Okay? Uh, this is uh, actually the in, in, in lieu of the exam that is being uh, given to applicants for admission. So they have what they call uh, this uh, uh, NCE race uh, uh, system. Okay? So those who have been qualified for the stage two okay, are now being asked to submit their uh, requirements. Okay? Uh, so they will uh, need actually to submit uh, a uh, personal essay on a specific topic that will be, that will be as sent to them Submit that can be submitted within 24 hours upon receipt of instruction. Okay, so we go to uh, another Kinabukasan uh, project. I'm referring to the uh, Sparta program uh, Philippines or so Sparta program, uh, Smarter Philippines. Uh, um, this is uh, uh, applications uh, and uh, re research and training. Uh, uh, this is the Sparta program where uh, they now have uh, uh, approved five capstone uh, projects. Okay? Uh, uh, Sparta means Smarter Philippines through data analytics, R&D, training and adoption. Okay? So the five projects that were approved were uh, number one from uh, Isabella State University in Kauaian, uh, and the topic is uh, OCD or Office of Civil Defense flood alert system for Cagayan River. The second one is uh, uh, for Iloilo. This is the public employment system for Iloilo. Uh, the third one is the traffic management uh, project for San Fernando City, La Union. The fourth one is the garbage collection system in the Gupan City. And the uh, fifth one is the market stall collection system in Urdaneta City. So they will use data analytics in uh, preparing uh, systems uh, uh, for this particular uh, concerns. Other proposals are still for refinement. There are now 21,000 enrollees uh, for the Sparta program, okay, uh, where 6,000 has also already completed the program. And the target is a total of 30,000 uh, enrollees. Uh, similarly, uh, the next one is a, also a training program and this is the DOST Coursera Scholarship Grant, uh, which started in April 2020. Okay, so Filipino online learners pursued lessons and blew up the number of completed courses from 13,729 in September of 2020 to 134,489 to date. Okay. Uh, during the top performer grantees awarding ceremony, where, where I was uh, virtually present uh, last January 20, uh, our uh, program head there, Noel Ahok, uh, announced that the enrolled courses passed already the 2 million uh, mark with more than 1 million learning hours spent in the platform. So the uh, grantees uh, who were uh, uh, well, grantees from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao were able to enjoy free online courses with certificates from different universities and organizations which are involved in Coursera, like Yale University, Johns Hopkins University, Google, and IBM, uh, where more than half of the grantees are uh, uh, employees. Ating mga participants mostly are employees. Other learners are students unemployed learners and part-time workers. So uh, to give some uh, recognition, the top performing DOS Coursera grantees were recognized last June, January 20, okay? And the top three grantees of the DOS Coursera scholarship are the following. There were actually 10, we recognized top 10, but I will just mention the top three. Uh, James Colongan Jr., an electrical engineering graduate, uh, also, a data scientist and entrepreneur who completed 923 courses and 165 specializations yes. in information technology, artificial intelligence, advanced machine learning, Python data products, advanced data science, okay, and others to help him develop 
is a startup company in General Santos City. Another one who is a top performer is Ivy Leonardo from Negros Occidental. She is a psychometrician and she completed 808 courses and 140 specializations, which include neuroscience and neuroimaging, health informatics, health information, literacy for data analytics. Okay. And the third one I will cite is Cherry Tabada. She is actually a college professor at uh, uh, Karagay State University in Butuan City. She completed 524 courses and guided projects. And as of January 2021, I uh, would like to report that uh, uh, 25,700 learners, 708 learners actually enrolled in a course called Business Communication Skills. Okay. Uh, in several universities and companies around the world. So given the industry benchmark, data shows a dramatic increase in learners' performance from June 2020 to January 2021 based on test scores. From 60%, scholars hit an average score now of 100%, reaching the industry average based on Coursera's benchmark. In fact, the Philippines rank number five now in the Coursera's index in learner growth with a 107% increase from September 2019 uh, to September 2020 based on the Coursera impact report last year. We are now about to uh, finish, but uh, there are, uh, I think, two more. Uh, I would like to report that the OST Philippine Techn Tech Textile Research Institute uh, is spearheading the celebration of the Philippine Tropical Fabrics Month. Uh, so they are uh, spearheading the celebration this year uh, uh, with the holding of the TELA conference on fashioning Philippine textiles in the new normal and the year of the creative economy, which started. The event was also held in celebration of the 54th founding anniversary of the Philippine Textile Research uh, Institute. The Tela Gallery actually offered a virtual and real space for designers and enterprises in their product conceptualization, uh, design ideation, ideation through prototyping in close proximity to our DOST PTRI facilities, uh, where you have the uh, tech generators and consultancy uh, available. Okay. Uh, next, uh, the last one I would like to report. Uh, on uh, outstanding achievement of our DOST Science and Technology Information Institute or DOST STII. Uh, uh, DOST STII raised the voice of science in 2020. Okay, so the DOST Science Communication Programs led by uh, uh, the DOST Science Technology Information Institute uh, and other agencies of DOST and regional offices intensified in 2020. So the activities in communication intensified in 2020, resulting in the increase in national level of awareness about science and technology. It was uh, actually uh, it was actually six percent in 2017. It rose to 13 percent in 2018, 16 uh, percent in 2019, uh, and uh, uh, now in 2020 the science and technology awareness level is at 23%. So uh, imagine the improvement from 6% in 2017 to 23% in 2020, okay? So um, actually uh, with quarantine restrictions, our DOS TV uh, reverted to live streaming to keep the public uh, informed. And eventually the DOS report live stream became, uh, the, the, became a platform Okay, to share the latest development in science and technology and for our media friends to pick their story leads. The OST STII became the go-to team to assist other government, other DOST agencies in organizing their webinars and virtual conferences. And uh, overall in 2020, while the number of our social media posts decreased 22%, our social media reach increased uh, 37% to reach more than 5.6 million uh, Filipinos and engage more than 7.3 uh, million. So uh, indeed, uh, our DOST Science and Technology Information Institute uh, actually uh, uh, 
did a lot, okay? Uh, including, of course, uh, a wider use of Starbucks and our e-library services. Uh, thank you, Onin. Uh, this is uh, uh, a relatively long report uh, uh, this week, but uh, that is uh, good, okay, to report uh, uh, many good developments. Uh, thank you very much. Maraming salamat po, Sec. Boy, at sa amin pong pagbabalik, ating haalamin ang mga programa ng DOST National Research Council of the Philippines kasama ang ating mga espesyal na bisita. Let us all see the other side of a researcher's life. This is my story and I share. I would never imagine that 38 years later. Stories can change lives positively. Mahalagahan natin ang bigas. Ito ay buhay. I explore the oceans for beneficial bacteria. We love personal stories. Be the best version of yourself, always. Read a lot and write a lot. Makikilala ka sa husay at daling mong angkin. This is my story. This is my story. This is my story and I share. Nagbabalik po ang DOST Report, ang basic research, ang siyang pundasyon at source ng mga bagong kaalaman at inovasyon na maaaring makatulong upang mabigyan solusyon ang ilang national issue sa bansa. At isang organisasyon na nagbibigay suporta sa mga basic research in all fields of sciences kasama ang social sciences and humanities. Ika nga, they help bring great ideas to life. Ito po ang DOST National Research Council of the Philippines. Naging presidente po si Sekboy ng NRC Pimula 2002-2007 at siya po ang longest serving president of the NRCP. Ngayong araw, marami po tayong panauhin Sekboy upang ibahagi ang ilang mga programa ng DOST NRCP at kung paano ba maging miyamura nito. Makakasama natin si Dr. Gregorio E.H. Del Pilar ang Presidente po ng DOST NRCP at Chair ng Social Science Division. Ibabahagi naman po sa atin ni Dr. Marietta Banyas Sumagaysay, ang Executive Director ng DOST NRCP, ang ilan sa mga programa na may impact sa buhay nating mga Pilipino. At mga naging remarkable projects at future plans naman sa kanikadalang division ang ibabahagi sa atin ni Dr. Arvin Diaz Mos, Chair of Biological Sciences Division, Si Dr. Leslie Michelle M. Del Macho, Chair of Medical Sciences Division, at si Dr. Edna Harlow Marquez, Chair of Earth and Space Sciences Division. Magandang araw po sa inyo. Dr. Sumagaysay, simulan muna natin sa pagpapakilala ng ating organisasyon para sa mga hindi nakakaalam, ano ba ang gawain ng National Research Council of the Philippines? Ano? Babagitin ko lang, itinayo po ang National Research Council of the Philippines noong pang 1933. Okay, salamat Secretary. Ang National Research Council of the Philippines ay isang konseho na binubuo ng mahigit ng libang libong miyembro sa iba't ibang disiplina o larangan ng pagdadalubhasa gaya ng medisina, agrikultura, biology, matematika, pisika, kemika at ang agham pandipunan at humanity. Ang konseho gaya ng nasabi ni Secretary ay tinatag noong 1933 upang itaguyod ang basic research, mga pangunahing pananaliksi, mga pagtutuklas at mga bagong kaalaman. Wika nga, it all starts with basic research. Ang konseho ay isang kinatawan ng mga tagapayo ng pamahalaan batay sa ebidensya, siyensya at teknolohiya. Dinadala natin sa Kongreso o kaya sa Senado o kaya sa mga LGUs ang mga resulta ng mga researches para mapatingkad pa ang evidence-based policy making sa bansa. Yun po, Secretary, yung a short summary kung ano po ang NRCP. 
Dr. Sumagaysay, alam natin na maraming mahuhusay na scientists at researchers sa buong bansa. Paano po nang susuportahan ng DOST, NRCP, ang mga Pinoy researchers mula sa Luzon, Visayas at Mindanao? Uh, sa kasalukuyan, Onin, meron tayong mga programa para masuportahan ang mga scientists, researchers at mga artists ng Pilipinas. At higit dito, ang layunin ng mga programa ng NRCP ay ang mapalago, mapaganap at mapaglinang pa ng husto ang kultura ng agham at teknolohiya sa buong bansa, lalo na yung medyo nasa malalayong lugar na hindi pa natin masyadong naaapot. Nagkakaroon ng NRCP ng Regional Basic Research Caravans. Kung punta po tayo sa mga rehiyon, nagkakaroon din tayo ng mga webinars kung saan ang mga resulta ng mga pananaliksik ng NRCP members ay naipalalaganap. Madami po ito gaya ng KTAP COVID, kapakanan ng tao sa oras ng pandemya, yung mga social dimensions po ng pandemya. Meron po tayong this uh, 2021 B2B, basic, uh, back to basic. Meron experts class ng mga webinar at I share. Ito ipapahayag po ito later ng ating Pangulo. Meron din, meron din tayong mga funding for research. Ta, uh, binibigay po natin ito sa ating mga researchers. At isa pa, matutulungan din ng ating mga SUCs, mga HEIs, na magkaroon ng sapat na kaalaman sa pananaliksik sa pamamagitan ng ating mga RD leaders. So marami po tayong programa at uh, ito ay makikita sa ating research pod, yung ating Facebook uh, account at saka nasa website po ng NRCP. Yan po, Oni. Marami salamat, Dr. Sumagaysay. Kasama din natin ngayon ang uh, pasalukuyang Pangulo ng uh, National Research Council of the Philippines, si Dr. Gregorio De Pilar. At uh, uh, bago magtanungan kayo uh, kung uh, bakit kapangalan ng bayani, ako na mismo ang magsasabi na ang kanyang great-grandfather ay kapatid ni, Dr. ni General Gregorio De Pilar. Alam ko po yun dahil pareho kaming mga taga-bulakan-bulakan. So magandang araw, Dr. De Pilar. Magandang araw sa inyo, uh, Sec Boy. Isa po sa layunin po, sir, ng DOST, Madamihin pa yung mga Pinoy researchers, scientists, engineers, at mathematicians. Dr. Del Pilar, paano po nakadutulong ang DOST NRCP para ma-inspire po yung ating mga kababayan na pasukin po ang STEM track? Opo. Uh, Marami-rami po ang ginagawa ang NRCP pero isa lang po ang babanggitin ko. Nabanggit na rin ito ni Dr. Sumagaysay kanina. Yung aming... Uh, series na I share webinar series po yun na itinatampok yung mga premyado ng aming uh, achievement awards. Taon-taon po nagbibigay kami ng mga uh, achievement awards sa uh, iba-ibang divisions doon sa mga pinaka uh, maganda o pinaka mayaman no ang ang naging uh, record sa pananaliksik. Ngayon itong aming I share series dito nila Uh, isinasalaysay. No? Hindi sila nagsimula na mga stellar performers kaagad. Nagsimula yan sa ibaba. Tapos uh, dahil sa kanilang talino at pagsisikap, naabot nila yung kanilang uh, napakayaman no? na record sa pananaliksik. At dito, isinasalaysay nila kung ano ang uh, nagtulak sa kanila. No? Sa liksikin yung kanilang mga napiling mga paksa, kung ano mga naging problema at kung paano nila nalampasan ang mga ito. So sa pamamagitan ng kanilang pagsasalaysay, ng kanilang personal na, na mga istorya, uh, inaasahan namin ano, na ma, magbibigay inspirasyon nito sa ating mga kabataan na piliin ang research no, sa bilang kanilang karera. Ayun. Salamat, Dr. Greg. Uh, actually, uh, marami sigurong mga researchers at uh, scientists na nanonood sa atin ngayon. Ano? Uh, paano ba sumali o maging miyembro ng National Research Council of the Philippines. Um, ang uh, siyempre ang bataya na no, yung iyong ginawa sa pananaliksik, no? So, meron kaming kategorya, dalawang kategorya ng uh, ng kasapi, yung associate member na tinatawag at yung regular member. Maari kang magsimulang mag-apply sa NRCP kapag meron kang bachelor's degree. No? Basta't uh, meron ka ng record ng publication. Nakapag-publish ka na ng iyong mga pananaliksik, uh, pwede ka nang sumapi bilang associate member. Siyempre, bukas ito dun sa mas mataas ang degree. No? Yung mga may hawak ng master's o doctoral uh, degrees. Um, 
actually kwan yon uh, sa sapat na yon basta merong kang record ng pananaliksik dun sa tatlong uh, nakaraang taon bago ka mag-apply pagkatapos kapag uh, active ka ng isang taon bi- bilang associate member at tumutupad ka doon sa iba pang requirements. Uh, halimbawa, meron kaming uh, ginagamit namin sa ngayon yung age index. no Merong takdang numero para dyan. Yung uh, ito, isang sukat ito ng research productivity. At naipakita mo na mula nung naging associate member ka, eh, nakapag-publish ka pa o nakagawa ka ng utility model kung ikaw ay isang engineer o nakagawa ka ng isang service manual kung ikaw ay isang geologist. Halimbawa, uh, ito ay uh, kwan, ano, mga mga uh, tinitingnan at ginagamit para ihalal ka bilang regular member. Ang regular members ng NRCP hinahalal ng buong kasapian. No? Kaya kailangan ang pananaw ng mga regular members ng NRCP hindi lang doon sa kanilang specialization kundi sa buong konseho. Okay. Uh, doon po sa mga interesado, magpunta po kayo sa aming website, NRCP Membership. Nakadetalye po doon yung aming uh, mga Uh, kailangan, no? yung kailangan para sa inyo para mag-apply. Ayan. Dr. Del Pilar, bilang kasalukuyan pong presidente ng DOST NRCP, ano po ang inyong mga plano para sa biggest collegial and scientific advisory body sa bansa? Okay. Um, nabanggit mo na collegial at uh, pinakamalaki kaming uh, konseho yes, sa bansa. Idadagdag ko yung uh, nabanggit na rin ito ni Dr. Sumagay say kanina, no? yung karakter na pagkamul multidisciplinary ng aming uh, konseho no dahil uh, dahil dito sa istruktura no kakaibang istruktura uh, ng NRCP ang mga plano namin uh, noon pa ganito na rin ang plano pero sa ngayon para uh, sa 2020 nagsimula kami to 2020 yung aking uh, pinamuno ang governing board at uh, tinitiyak namin na magagamit yung strukturang ito no sa mga proyektong napili naming alalakukan. Una kong babanggitin yung Future Earth, no? Ang Future Earth ay isang kalipunan ng mga siyentipiko at mananaliksik sa buong mundo, no? Na nakatuon ang atensyon sa mundo sa hinaharap, no? At ang uh, kung ano ang kailangang gawin natin sa ngayon ng mga pamahalaan sa buong mundo ng industriya at ng mga pangkaraniwang tao. Nang sa ganun, matiyak natin na ang mundo sa hinaharap ay pagpapatuloy na ligtas no? at nakapagbibigay ng ginhawa na kailangan at uh, karapatan ng mga tao. No? Kasi kung hindi natin uh, kwan, pagtutuon na ng pansin, yung tinatawag na Sustainability Development Goals, hindi ba? na binuo ng ng United Nations at uh, at uh, sinusuportahan ng Future Earth. Uh, ano ang mangyayari no? Kabilang dito yung clean energy, 'di ba? Kailangan uh, mas gumamit tayo ng malinis na enerhiya, solar, wind, thermal sa halip na yung pagsubstitute dito sa global warming, no? Uh, o kaya yung paggamit uh, responsible production and consumption isa pang sustainable uh, sustainability development goal ito yung sobra sobrang paggamit ng single use plastic alam natin kung ano nagiging resulta niyan sa ating karagatan at uh, sa ating environment in general so ito ito po yung pinagtutuunan ng pansin na uh, binuo po yung Future Earth Philippines noong 2018 ni National Scientist Lourdes Cruz at mula nung simula hanggang sa ngayon ay bahagi po ang NRCP nito Um, ang pangalawa ko pong babanggitin ay yung, uh, alam nyo po siguro, baka nabanggit na ni Secboy, yung uh, panukala ng DOST sa pagtatatag ng Virology Institute of the Philippines. Yes, ano po? Uh, alam naman natin kung uh, gaano kahalaga itong, itong ganitong klase ng uh, ahensya. At uh, ang NRCP po, dahil meron po kami mga eksperto sa medical sciences, pharmaceutical sciences, biological sciences, chemical sciences, agriculture and forestry, veterinary medicine, meron po kami mga kasapi na nagsasaliksik tungkol sa mga paksa na may kaugnayan sa virology at immunology. Kaya po uh, magdada, magdaraos po kami ng webinar sa Marso, siguro Marso at Abril, no? kung saan tatalakayin namin itong mga pananaliksik na ito na maaaring maging simula ng, kwan, ng, uh, ng uh, pag-uugnay nito mga pag-aaral na ito na magiging ambag sa trabaho ng Virology Institute na bubuin. Ang huli ko pong babanggitin ay yung tungkol sa heritage mapping. Ano? Meron po tayong batas sa, tungkol sa, 
sa pagpoprotekta ng ating uh, culture and heritage noong 2009, kamakailan merong final na bill no, na lalo pang pinapalakas ito. At isang gawain na pinapanukala dito o yung tinatawag na heritage mapping siguro ang mas magandang termino dito. Sa madaling salita, ang paggagawa ng inventario ng ating mga minana, no? mga minanang kultura at uh, likas na yaman sa bawat lokalidad. No? Uh, so ito, eh, meron kasi ang NRCP na mga historiador, antropologista, mga uh, mananaliksik sa humanities, uh, geographers, no? na maaaring masangkot dito. Uh, ang, ang heritage mapping, ano ba ito? Gumagawa tayo ng inventario nitong mga kayamanang ito pero pinag-uugnay-ugnay natin sa para sa isang mapa, hindi ba? Hindi lang inventario ito, pero mapa. No? Nang sa ganun, magamit itong kaalaman ng ating yaman sa kultura, yung mga awit, yung mga uh, sayaw, yung mga dula, no? mga istruktura tulad ng simbahan, mga monumento, uh, at saka yung likas na yaman, no? yung mga lawa, mga burol, mga bundok, uh, mga dalampasigan sa isang lugar. Lahat ng ito nagbibigay ng ng saysay no sa 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 mga tao na doon nakatira no at uh, nakikita na sa pamamagitan ng ganitong kaalaman ng mga tao sa bawat lokalidad mas mapahuhusay ang pamamahala ng mga LGU at mas mapahuhusay ang 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 pan ang paglahok ng mga tao ng mga pangkaraniwang tao sa gawain sa mga aktibidad sa komunidad So ito po ay uh, uh, sinisika po namin na uh, uh, lahukan din. Okay. Maraming po salamat, Dr. Gregorio E.H. Del Pilar. Ngayon naman po kung sapin natin ang ilan sa mga chair ng bawat divisions po ng DOST NRCP, ano-ano po ba yung mga priority research areas ninyo? At para doon sa mga completed researches, ano naman ang naging impact po ng mga ito? Ano po mga programa maaari asahan natin mula sa inyo? Unahin po natin si Dr. Arvin Yes, Boss Chair of Biological Sciences Division. Uh, Biological Sciences Division, isa po siyang division lang ng uh, NRCP. No? Mm -hmm. And uh, sa ngayon po, ay, siya, siya ang may pinakamaraming membro. Mm -hmm. Around 900 po and about 60%. Uh, 900 members ito, buong Pilipinas rin po ito. And about 60% dito ay uh, aktibo naman. Ano? And... Um, Uh, in in the past years, lalo na in the past uh, three to four years, malaki po yung um, naging very productive po yung ating mga miyembro. Dahil malaki na rin po yung malaking malaki po yung tulong kasi na ginawa ng DOST na ating uh, 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 especially na no, ating mga officers, you know, from USEC Yorobe to USEC Guevara and of course USEC Boy, uh, malaking support ang binigay. Kaya malaki rin po yung na i, uh, ambag na pondo para sa NRCP mm -hmm. dahil sa ginawa na, na, na trabaho po na aming executive uh, director and of course yung mga uh, governing board. No? Uh, in terms of projects po, kasi uh, katulad sa ibang division, marami po yung uh, na, na pondo. Han? About 35 projects ito in the last uh, four years, napakadami po nun sa, sa history na rin po ng, ng konseho na ito. And uh, uh, nasa apat na larangan po ito eh, pumapasok. Uh, Siyempre, merong human health, and then meron pong food security, and then ang pangatlo po ay uh, ang research po tukol sa mga antibiotics, and then yung fourth po ay yung biodiversity, yung biological diversity. Ito pong apat na, na kategorya na ito na ginawang proyekto ng mga miyembro natin sa biological divisions in collaboration with other divisions po ito ng NRCP ay swak po ito or pasok na pasok dun sa tinatawag na NIBRA or NIPRA, National Integrated Basic Research Agenda ng NRCP. So malaki po itong ambag na ito sa pag taas po ng, well, ng antas ng research and of course kabuhayan and uh, welfare ng, ng ating mga kapwa sa kapwa Pilipino at sa bansa po na ito. 
Uh, kung, uh, kung magbibigay po ako ng mga examples, uh, for example, marami na po tayong mga, manan, na, ma, mga researchers mananaliksik uh, galing sa iba't ibang regions ng Pilipinas. So hindi na po uh, totoo na uh, dominated ng mga uh, institutions, you know, universities sa Metro Manila mm-hmm. ang research. Uh, uh, masaya po kaming ibabalita sa inyong lahat na Marami pong uh, uh, tayo magagaling na mga researchers, scientists, professors sa mga iba-ibang regions ng Pilipinas po. Uh, uh, for example po, meron po tayong biodiversity research na ginagawa sa Mindanao, sa Lake Lanao, sa Lake Holon. Uh, ito po ay led ng mga universities like uh, Mindanao State University, IIT, and uh, MSU Marawi, Sultan Kudarat. State University. Marami po silang mga magagandang resulta na, uh, na, na nakuha na ma, ma, malap, malaki po yung tulong sa ecotourism at sa kabuhayan po ng mga uh, local residents. And then kung bibigyan, magbibigay po tayo ng examples, meron po tayong tinatawag na uh, food security program, yung Fresh Farms na sinisimulan po siya ng <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, na, uh, nililid po siya ng University of the Philippines sa Los Baños and Laguna State Polytechnic University. So ito po yung tinitignan nila kung ano po yung mga, uh, ma- mga masamang organismo na makikita sa ating mga uh, farm. And tinitignan po yung uh, food, sec- food security and yung risk analysis po ito. Uh, marami rin po tayong uh, research na ginagawa sa Samar, Samar Island, especially po yung University of Eastern uh, Philippines, yung Eastern Samar State University and yung Samar uh, State University pa. And um, meron rin po dito tayo sa may uh, north, uh, north Fili- uh, northern regions ng Philippines pa. Na marami rin po tinitigdan na mga research on Um, for example, ano naman po yung mga antibiotics na makikita sa mga bakawan or mangroves and yung ano yung mga pwedeng makita na mga antibiotics ren sa mga gagamba, mga spiders. Ito po yung mga pinangungunahan naman ng mga taga uh, University of uh, Santo Tomas sa Manila. And meron rin pong ginawang malaking proyekto, multidisciplinary din po ito, katulad ng sinabi ng ating presidente at ng ating executive director na malaking tulong po ito sa Siargao Island naman. We know na ang Siargao Island is one of the top destina- uh, tourist destinations in the country. So yung, yung bakawan po doon, yung mangroves, na I'm sure si Sec. Boy gusto niya rin itong maprotektahan ng maayos, ay uh, tumutulong po ang NRCP sa local government unit sa Del Carmen, and of course sa DNR, para at nag-research nag, uh, nag, uh, po ang mga taga-NRCP doon. Multidisciplinary po ito. Meron taga-UP, taga-UST, taga-National Museum, taga-Department of Agriculture, at uh, of course yung local government. So um, ang maganda po nangyayari in the past four years ay tumataas po yung antas ng research natin. Mas marami po tayo mga researchers from other regions na talagang nabibigyan ng ng uh, magandang chance po, ng opportunity. No? Ang siguro masasabi ko lang po, eh, uh, kung mabigyan naman ng chance, they will rise up to the occasion. Eh. Meaning, kung mabigyan ng magandang support ng ating gobyerno through the UST, marami po talaga magagawa ang ating mga Filipino na researchers. At magagaling po tayo. Tama po kayo. Uh, sa ating mga tagasubaybay, uh, isang uh, uh, scientist po sa National Museum, si Dr. Arvin Jesbos. Para naman sa Medical Sciences Division, ano namang mga programa ang uh, pwede nating abangan? Ang pwede naming uh, abangan, Dr. Uh, Leslie Dalmasio. Magandang hapon po, Sec Boy, Onin at sa lahat. Uh, bilang panimula, gusto ko pong ipahatid sa ating mga manonood na ang mga kasapi ng Division of Medical Sciences ay hindi lamang po mga medical doctors, kundi pati mad- mga medical technologists, nurses, public health practitioners, food scientists, at biomedical researches, researchers sa mga universidad na binubuklod ng kanilang ginagawa sa larangan ng basic biomedical research. At ang mga miyembro ng division ay may ugnayan sa research ng ibang division ng NRCP. 
Uh, sa kasalukuyan po for implementation po ang isang mahalagang research ng miyembro ng aming division na nais matukoy ang uri sa level ng DNA ng drug-resistant tuberculosis sa Pilipinas. Mahalaga po ang impormasyon na makukuha sa pag-aaral na ito para matukoy ang tamang paggamot sa sakit na TB. Katulad ng ginagawa ngayon sa SARS-CoV-2 variants, sa pag-aaral na ito sa TB, gagamit na po ng new technology sa pamamagitan ng sequencing ng DNA ng bakterya. Kasama rin po ang aming mga miyembro sa isang proyekto in collaboration sa mga miyembro ng Biological Sciences Division. Ang ugnayan ng mga biologists at medical experts sa proyektong ito na naglalayon matukoy ang mga metabolites na maaaring ma-develop bilang bagong antibiotic ay binibigyang diin ang utility ng basic research. Dahil po sa komposisyon ng aming mga miyembro, isusulong po ng division ang research gamit ang omics technology na nakita po natin ang importansya ngayong pandemic. Kasama na rin po dito ang nutrigenomics research. Gayon din po ang epidemiological surveillance at research to address antibiotic resistance sa pamamagitan ng pagbabahagi ng mga miyembro ng kanilang mga research for policy development or utilization at promotion ng inter or multidisciplinary research to bring these researches further. Sa mga darating na buwan, matutunghayan nyo rin po ang mga accomplished at inspiring members ng Medical Sciences Division sa mga upcoming online activities ng NRCP uh, gaya ng iShare, KTAP, Back to Basics, at sa webinar tungkol sa Virology Institute of the Philippines. Yun lamang po. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat po, Dr. Dalmasio. At para naman po sa Earth and Space Science Division, si Dr. Eden Harlow Marquez naman ang magiging isa ng kanyang paliwanag, Dr. Marquez. Magandang araw, Onion and uh, Secretary Boy, at sa lahat ng mga nanonood ngayong araw na ito. Sa panig po ng Division 12, yung Earth and Space Sciences Division. Yung mga miyembro po namin uh, bukod sa ACADIM ay nagtatrabaho po sa FIVOX, Pag-asa, uh, Mines and Geosciences Bureau. Yes. Um, medyo maliit pa po yung aming division kaya pinipilit po namin na mag-recruit pa ng mas maraming ano, magiging posibleng miyembro ng aming okay. division. So, um, yung sa tungkol naman po sa mga plano, um, hihimukin ko po yung magiging bagong pinuno ng aming division na ipagpatuloy niya ang nasimulan natin ng mga gawain. Isa na rito ang pakikipag-collaborate sa mga professional organizations at sa akadim. Nakapag-organisa na po tayo ng forums at symposiums sa tulong ng Geological Society of the Philippines at Universidad ng Pilipinas School of Environmental Science and Management. Ang mga naging paksa sa manasabing forum at symposium ay tumalakay sa water crisis, Manila Bay at mga ideya para sa pagbawas ng epekto ng iba't ibang kalamidad sa ating bansa. Pangalawa, hihimukin ko rin po ang magiging bagong pinuno na ipagpatuloy ang suporta uh, na sa aming mga miyembro sa paggawa ng multidisciplinary at transformative researches sa larangan ng Earth and Space Sciences. Halimbawa po ay patungkol sa iba't ibang aspeto at epekto ng climate change at geometeo hazards. Gayon din po sa larangan ng pananaliksik hinggil sa kalawakan. Maaari rin pong tignan yung mga basic research tungkol sa pollution at pagtingin sa mga bato para maintindihan kung anong naganap sa nakaraan ng ating daigdig. Binuksan na rin po namin ang aming pagpupulong sa division sa pag-imbita sa mga non-Earth and space scientists sa aming mga scientific sessions upang magbigay ng dagdag kaalaman sa aming mga miyembro. Halimbawa po nito ay ang ang presentation ni Dr. Uh, Leslie Delmasio ng Medical Sciences Division tungkol yes. sa environmental surveillance while waiting for the COVID-19 vaccine. Pangatlo, ihimokin ko rin po siya na ipagpatuloy po sana niya ang paghimok sa governing board ng National Research Council of the Philippines na pag-aralan ng ideya ng pagbuo ng student chapter ng NRCP para lalo pang mapalaganap sa mga kabataan ang kultura ng tamang pananaliksik sa ating bansa. Salamat po. 
Salamat uh, Dr. Marquez at tayo naman ngayon ay eh, babalik kay President uh, Dr. Del Pilar para tanungin siya tungkol naman sa Social Science Division. Uh, sa Social Science Division, Sekboy, ang binibigyan namin ng pansin ngayon yung kwana no, yung pakikipag-ugnayan sa sa Congress no, uh, doon sa uh, Congressional Policy and Research uh, uh, Congressional Policy and budget research department at yung Senate Economic Planning Office no na actually nakapagsimula na kami dito at sa kwana to sa gawaing ito nung binu namin yung legislative forum for policy development noong nung nakaraang taon pero ang plano namin uh, eh lalo pang gawing mas uh, aktibo no yung participation yung paglahok ng aming mga uh, yung aming mga kasapi rito at maliban doon ay uh, kasi doon madadala nila yung kanila mga pananaliksik at maririnig din nila kung ano yung mga kwan ano yung mga uh, problema na gustong solusyunan ng ating mga mambabatas. Uh, maliban doon gusto rin naming gawin itong idea no ng legislative forum for policy development sa level ng LGU no kasi tulad ng nabanggit ni Dr. Sumagaysay advisory body ang NRCP sa lahat ng antas ng gobyerno hanggang LGU kaya sa siguro sa mga siyudad no sa mga munisipyo eh kapag meron kaming sapat na bilang ng mga miyembro doon ay makikipagpulong din plano rin namin na makipagpulong sa kanila at maggabuo no ng mga pananaliksik ng mga panukalang pananaliksik para doon sa mga uh, pangangailangan ng LGU ito po yung aming mga pangunahing uh, uh, proyekto sa ngayon Oh my. Maraming salamat po sa ating mga espesyal na panoorin mula po sa DOST NRCP. Balikan ko lang si Director Sumagaysay. Baka po may mga activities po kayo na nais ipaalam sa publiko na sa inyo po ang pagkakataon. Uh, okay. Salamat, Onim. Uh, maliban sa mga nasabi po ng ating mga governing board members, meron po tayong mga webinars na dapat abangan. Magkakaroon po tayo ng series of webinars ng Quincentennial Uh, commemoration in the Philippines. Gaya po uh, sa nasabi kanina, uh, yung mga inspirasyon po galing kay Secretary Boy, itong isang ito, yung Quincentennial Commemoration in the Philippines, uh, magkakaroon po tayo ng mga at least 10 na mga webinars throughout the year. At saka inaanyayahan po ang lahat ng mga kasapi ng NRCP na ang ating pinakamalaking kaganapan ng taon ay sa ika 10 ng Marso na, March 10, ito ay ang ating annual scientific conference and 88th general membership assembly na may temang pagbangon at pananaig, national recovery and rebuilding. Inaasahan po namin na dadalo po kayo. Lahat po ito ay nasa ay sa Zoom tayo at uh, agbangan ang mga announcements at mga detalye sa research pod. Ang ating uh, Facebook account pati na rin doon sa ating website meron din kaming, kaming mga sulat na ibibigay sa inyo para ma, ma-remind po kayo sa ating mga gaganapin ngayong taon. Salamat po. Maraming po salamat mga kaibigan ng ating mga bisita mula sa National Research Council of the Philippines. Si Dr. Del Pilar mula po sa lahing ng mga bayani, kay Dr. Sumagaysay, kay Dr. Delmasio, kay Dr. Arvin Diaz-Mos, at kay Dr. Eden Harlo Marquez. Maraming po salamat sa inyo. Sa amin pong pagbabalik, sasagutin po ni Secretary Boy ang tanong ng bayan, wag po kaya alis ito ang DOST report. Oras na para sagutin ni Secretary Boy ang tanong ng bayan para po sa ating katanungan mula kay Divine Liwana Grayes, PhD, Managing Editor ng Unlad Bayan at Online Faculty ng the Manila Times o the Manila Times School of Journalism. Ang mga priority areas of research po ba ng NRCP, Director Sumagaysay, ay di po naapektuhan ng COVID pandemic. At ang pangalawang tanong po niya, sakali po naapektuhan sa ang mga partikular na puntong inyong mailalahad at ano po ang naging solusyon ng NRCP para matugunan pa rin 
ang suporta sa mga researchers? Uh, opo, na naapektuhan po yung ibang mga researchers natin, lalo na yung collection ng mga samples, for example, sa mga fieldwork. Pero uh, sila po ay naging inang extension ng ating uh, ng kanilang project implementation date at naibigay naman po ng NRCP na approve po ng governing board. Alright. Secretary, baka may mga nais pa sabihin? Um, it, it, babanggitin ko lang na actually during the uh, pandemic, ano, nakatulong ng malaki yung mga uh, paglalahad ng uh, ating uh, NRCP nung uh, kanilang mga resulta ng mga research, lalo na yung sa uh, social sciences kasi uh, ito ay uh, may kinalaman sa ano ang mga naging uh, uh, reaction ng tao sa mga policies sa pandemic, uh, ano ang mga uh, iba't ibang klaseng uh, policies na inanalyze nila at uh, pati yung mga may epekto halimbawa sa mental health, may epekto sa uh, pati nga yung epekto sa uh, I think sa pag uh, pagkakaroon ng teenage pregnancies ay in inaral din nila ano. So ang dami nilang uh, nagawa kahit na mga online surveys lang ay uh, nakita natin ang pulso ng bayan. Kaya maganda yung mga naging uh, uh, epekto ng kanilang mga uh, information dissemination out of their uh, researches. All right. Maraming po salamat, Sir Boy. Baka may mga nais pa kayong sabihin sa ating po mga bisita sa araw na ito. Nakita ko lumaki ang uh, NRCP both in terms of membership, in terms of the number of projects, and uh, even in terms of budget. Ano? Of course, uh, maliit pa rin pero uh, relatively ay uh, lumaki naman. At saka uh, ang kagandahan niyan ay... Uh, Uh, natutupad nila yung pangarap ko tungkol sa role ng NRCP na ika nga eh, uh, makadevelop din ng policy for science at saka uh, yung science naman ay magamit for policy. So uh, natutuwa ako sa performance ng National Research Council of the Philippines. The, the biggest, oldest and uh, uh, shall we say the most active collegial body of scientists in our country, of researchers in our country. All right. Maraming salamat, Sekboy, at sa ating mga naging panoorin ngayong araw. Mga kaibigan, abangan nyo rin po ang Sinesyensya tuwing lunes at Expert Talk Online tuwing Merkules, alas 5 ng hapon, kasama si Jel Miranda sa DOS TV Facebook page at YouTube channel. Mas maray pang balita mula sa mundo ng siyensya at teknolohiya ang ating pag-uusapan kaya tutok namin kayo tuwing biyernes, alas 4 ng hapon dito sa DOS TV Facebook page. Ako po si Onin Miranda, itong mga balitang may kinalaman sa siyensya at teknolohiya para sa bawat Pilipino, straight from the S&P Authority ng Bansa. Ito ang DOST Report.